I'm going to recognize uh, Dorothy Harrison Mitchell to talk about the diversity policy. Hello, everyone. Um, I appreciate this opportunity to be able to speak on our IDS policy on diversity. Um, as you see here, I have it as diversity, inclusion, and equity. And what I would like to do first, that you all, all the commissioners have received a um, copy of the proposed diversity, inclusion, and equity statement and plan that the committee has created. And so you, hopefully you would have already reviewed that. But I would like to touch on a few things and kind of give a little bit of information about the different terms and why we have the terminology that we have in the statement and the plan and then the steps moving forward. Okay. So I will start with what is diversity? Um, first, I want to say that I know that when we hear that word, we all like to think that we know what diversity means. Um, and we immediately jump to what, what we believe that is. And so even if it, it is based on, if it is the basic, basic meaning of just being different, okay? But it actually means a little bit more than that. And so you see here, I have an Oxford Dictionary definitions, um, the state of being diverse, variety, the practice of, or quality of including or involving people from a range of different social and ethnic backgrounds and of different gender, sexual orientations, et cetera, et cetera. It also refers to all the similarities and differences that define us as human beings. It's a wide variety of differences and similarities. They're often referred to as dimensions among people. And I will let you all know that in, in working with this committee um, and just the times that we are in, and I've done a lot of research in this area, and th these are it was very enlightening to me um, that, like I said, the everyday terminology, what we see as everyday terminology is not necessarily what we think it is. And so you'll see what I'm talking about a little bit more. I know this looks like a lot, but I'll break it down. Um, so as far as diversity in the workplace and in organizations, we often look to four different types of diversity. And this is an area that I was in life because I never thought about the different types of diversity. When you think of diversity, you just think diversity. Um, so you have internal diversity, external diversity, organizational diversity and worldview diversity. And as you see there, internal diversity are those characteristics that a person is born with or born into. So those are things that people don't choose for themselves and it's impossible to change those things. Examples are race, ethnicity, age, nationality, but that list is there, you can see that. And then we go to external diversity. Those are characteristics that a person is not born with or born into. And those are things that can be greatly influenced by other people and their surroundings. Um, and there are ultimately aspects that a person can change, okay? And so, um, uh, oftentimes those things, that diversity may change over time, okay? That, um, those examples of that is education, appearance, so on and so forth. You see the list there. I'm trying to stay within our time. Then organizational diversity, um, also called functional diversity. No matter what position or pay you may have, um, where, whatever, whatever work you're in or whatever you work in with or who, it solidifies your belonging in an organization. You see here, um, this relates to the differences between people that are assigned to them by an organization. These characteristics, those are characteristics that are within a workplace that distinguish one employee from another. And then, of course, for like an organization like we have, one person from another, one commissioner from another, one leader from another, okay? They, there are different subsets under organizational diversity, and those include job function, place of work, management status, employment status, pay type, seniority, union affiliation. It could be a private or nonprofit, public sector or governmental organization. No matter what, you are part of an organized um, group in some some sort of uh, some way or some fashion. Okay, then we move to worldview diversity. There are a number of factors that come together to form a worldview, including characteristics from all other types of diversity. So it's, it encompasses the other three types, and we all have a worldview that we align with. And I think we all can agree on that. We know that, right? It changes over time as well. 
because it's based on the different experiences we may have and the self-reflection that we may go through over time. And I know um, we, some of us are young, some of us are more seasoned. And so probably the more seasoned people can really relate to that, that you probably change your worldview a lot of times over time, right? Um, so we see, like I said, we see things differently based on those experiences and self-reflection. Those examples would include political beliefs, moral compass, outlook on life, philosophy. Okay. This is just another chart that says all of what I just said in the four different types of diversity, just in, in a different format. And y'all know I'm a professor, so I like to present it in different formats because you have different types of learning. So that's there. Then we have what is equity? And why not equality? Because I'm sure some of you probably read our um, statement in our plan and said, well, why did they choose the word equity as opposed to equality? And so I want to talk about why we did that and why we chose that word. So equity here is um, justice according to natural law or right, the state quality or ideal of being just, impartial, or fair, and is synonymous with fairness or justice. So here's the, the classroom side of me too. Um, can somebody volunteer and tell me which one of these pictures, the, youth, of the two pictures that are on here, which one denotes equality and which one denotes equity? Or should I say, which one is the, let's say, equality picture? Anybody? I can't see everybody on the screen, y'all. So if somebody's volunteering, I don't want to do you put y'all back in law school or in class, just call on somebody. Margaret volunteer. Okay. <laughs> Margaret. Left is equal is equality. They all have the same stool. Right is equity. Absolutely. Do you want to go into a little bit more on why you what's different between the equality and equity? Uh, so equality, they all have the exact same stool, but they weren't all born with the same height. So Absolutely. it has disparate impact and equity has more to do with the impact of how things are processed or put in place. And Margaret, and if we were in class, I would give you a high five or throw you some candy or something. <laughs> All right, so you are absolutely Equality is on the left, equity is on the right. Equality, like uh, Margaret said, that all the persons are given the same resources, but because they have different heights, they're not able to all see over the fence. And then the right side is equity. Each person is given resources they need in order to see the same or to have an equitable opportunity. And so that is why we chose the word equity as opposed to equality. And so what do we have now? As you see here, that, that picture on the bottom is, is what we have now. Or, and I'm not just saying us as IDS, just in general, in most organizations or in the world, that's what you usually see. And then the picture on the right is just another picture to show because it's, you know, some people want to see this, but if I'm reaching for something, okay? So it's just another example of equality versus equity. All right, now let's look at what are, what is inclusion? Now inclusion um, is under, according to Oxford Dictionary, the action or state of including or being included within a group or structure, the practice or policy of providing equal access to opportunities and resources for people who might otherwise be excluded or marginalized, such as those who have physical or mental disabilities and members of minority groups. It's a sense of belonging. It's feeling respected, valued, and seen for who we are as individuals and is more than diversity, and is more than numerical representation. And when you have inclusion, there's a level of supportive energy and commitment from your leaders and your colleagues and others so that we individually and collectively can do our best work, okay? So in inclusion involves that authentic and empowered participation and a true sense of belonging. That is what we want to strive for, right? So here, why diversity? Why equity? Why inclusion? Why is all of that so important? Because all of these phrases or words that you see here, these are things that will come about if we have these things. We want to achieve or have as much diversity and equity and inclusion on all fronts for varied perspectives, better problem solving, better job pool, et cetera, et cetera. You all see those there, which will have people think more creatively. And they're more likely to be happy 
And we want some happiness going on, right? And you definitely want happiness in the workplace. And for our purposes, you want people to feel happy when they come to the training sessions that we provide and all the CLEs and presentations and different things because they are seeing people who look like them and may think like them or may think differently than them, but they are more open to diverse mindsets and things than, than what they've seen in the past. And so having a workplace or organization, I found this, this is a quote that I found, having a workplace or organization that has zero tolerance for certain negative behavior and discrimination and is more inviting to those groups that have been discriminated against is a conscious decision that makes the entire organization a better place and can ultimately make the community better. Now, what do we want to see? All right, we want to have um, what the, the goal is for us to strive, what we strive to achieve is what you see here. And, and if hopefully you're seeing it, it's these things interwoven together, okay? So you have, uh, we want our plan and our goals to be interwoven into our policies and practices, as you see here, and it should be intentional and integrated and institutionalized. We have so many negative things that are institutionalized. Let's start working on some positive things being institutionalized, right? It should be, in, uh, and once those things occur on that left side, then hopefully it creates awareness, a better attitude, and greater action that will take place. And then lastly, I'm zooming. I'm getting the looks from Mary. She proud me on working through this really quickly. All right. So um, as I stated before, our committee has worked on this. So we formed a diversity sub or sub not subcommittee, a diversity committee of the commission. And so the committee members are Judge Lisa Menifee, Art Viller, Jan Pritchett, Kate Finhagen. We had Sarah Olson, who did a lot of the heavy lifting. I appreciate you so much, Sarah Olson. And then Mary Pollard and then Whitney um, Fairbanks assisted us as well. And so we all came together and we created the statement that you all received and the plan. You all saw the statement before. And I think that we got some approval before of the prior statement, but the new one that you received in your packet that also has the plan attached to it has some edits in it. And so what happened is we went back our committee, we realized that we were reading more words into our statement when we started to create our plans. We were reading more words into our statement in our plan than what was actually in. So we had left out the word equity. And so we went back in and we included equity in all the places that made sense for us to have equity. So now the statement includes diversity, equity, and inclusion. And so those are the edits as far as the actual statement. And so what we envision, as you see in, in the plan, is for this statement and this plan to be posted on all our media um, outlets, and on our website, go out in all our materials that we send out. And then the plan includes all these different goals. It is, make sure I'm saying the right number, six goals. And all, uh, all those different goals have various numbers of strategies under each one that we um, have decided and come together as a committee that will be really useful, really good for us moving forward and for us to really do a good job of integrating all of these different things and institutionalizing um, this statement and plan into what we do in our policy. So that first step is the creation of the statement and the plan, we've done that as a committee. And so I wanna publicly thank the committee members for doing that. We worked really, really hard um, this was a labor of love in a lot of ways, and I, I, we're really proud of the statement and the plan that we've um, submitted here to you all, presented to you all. Now we're at the point of asking that we that the full commission adopts this statement and plan. And so at the appropriate time, I'd ask, I'd ask for uh, a motion when well, it comes out of committee, so we need just a second, and then um, a formal vote so that we can officially adopt this plan and the, the, sorry, the statement and then the plan. If it is adopted, hopefully it will be, we will then move to the next step. And our IDS leadership under the great leadership of Ms. Pollard will create a process to facilitate the plan and collect data. And I should say not will create, we'll continue working on that process because they've already begun that process. And so they're gonna work on, continue working on that. So the, those goals and those strategies will actually be implemented. And it's not just something that we have on paper. And then from there, IDS leadership and the commission will review data, 
because as you see in one of the, some of the goals, there's data that we're going to collect, um, information that we're going to collect, and we want to, because we don't just want to have this, like I said, we want to make sure that we actually are doing what we have in our plan. And so we will review that data based on an established process and timing that our leadership will um, outline for us. And then from there, our IDS leadership and commission will review and update the statement and plan as needed. And so that is what I have. Um, like I said, if, I guess this will be, um, unless there are any questions or concerns, um, I would ask for a call of vote. 